Okay, now I'd like to discuss the difference between plasma and serum. Oftentimes you'll hear somebody say, here's a plasma sample or here's a serum sample. Well, these are the two possibilities after you collect blood. You can either harvest serum or harvest plasma from one sample, but you can't do both. So let's explain that. If you have an anticoagulant present in the syringe or the tube that you're collecting blood, that's going to prevent the blood from clotting. And then after centrifugation, you get plasma from that sample. Okay? So if you have an anticoagulant, and we'll name some, and you spin in the blood, you get plasma. So what are some common anticoagulants. Here's three very common anticoagulants. Heparin, sometimes on the bottle you'll see it labeled as sodium heparin. Then there's EDTA, which is a long, long word that I won't tell you about in this introductory type course, but it's a very common anticoagulant. And then the third common one is sodium citrate. Now these would be commonly used in test tubes when you collect blood. There's different reasons for using different anticoagulants, by the way. If you have no anticoagulant in the tube, as I'm indicating over here, no anticoagulant, you spin the blood just like you do in the case of plasma, but if you have no anticoagulant, then the top fluid portion is called serum because serum is what's left over after a clot is formed. Okay, so then to collect serum you would have what's called a plain tube. You're collecting blood into a tube that has no anticoagulant. So let's see what that looks like in this drawing thanks to somebody better than myself. I can compare how you get plasma versus how you get serum. Plasma over here wasn't clotted from clotted blood, so it contains clotting factors, one named here, fibrinogen. Then we know that the white blood cells and platelets line up here in what we call the buffy coat and then red blood cells. On the right, there was no anticoagulant and therefore we have serum, and the clot at the bottom used the blood clotting factors. So then the serum has no fibrinogen or any of the clotting factors. They were used to make the clot. A lot of times when you do spin blood, the clot will go down and fill the whole volume here where this is indicating there's serum down here. If you spin it in a centrifuge, it will basically fill up the bottom, kind of just like the plasma side. So this picture just shows you dog plasma that can be used for a transfusion. This happens to be 240 mils, and you know also that that's 240 cc's. They're the same. And this has been collected aseptically to the best of their ability, and it's ready for a transfusion of plasma. Now here's a nice picture that shows plasma. It happens to be from humans, but it's got four different scenarios here. Here on the far right, and these tubes aren't equal in volume, so don't worry about that, but this is a relatively normal appearance of plasma from a human. Kind of pale, of not very much yellow showing, almost clear. So that's normal in this case. This happens to be from a person that has a lot of lipids in their blood. This is still called plasma, but it's kind of cloudy because there's a high level of lipids in the total blood. And when these are all spun by a centrifuge and you still get that cloudy looking plasma. This plasma sample, you can see, has been spun because there's the red blood cells. But this is an, from a human that actually has jaundice. 
when the plasma sample is too yellow, that's an indication of jaundice. And sometime later when we talk about the liver and liver function, we can talk about jaundice. It's not always because of a bad liver, but maybe the liver is overwhelmed. But nonetheless, this is a, from a person that has jaundice. The far left picture has a little bit hemolysis. That means some red blood cells broke during the processing and it's a little red tinged plasma. And finally, I thought this image was good. It compares normal serum, what normal serum looks like here on the right tube. It's serum that has been removed from the blood collection tube, just to show you normal serum. But on the far left image here, this is hemolyzed. So this sample is really just serum. This thing is all serum, but it's been hemolyzed so bad that the serum is very red. And uh, so that's this image. The middle one is selling a product where you put this product in a sample that looks like this, and you spin it, and you get all the hemoglobin down to the bottom, and now you can, let's say, recover some normal serum.